Build the dream in FIFA 20, pay less and get more, and use the code TVM at checkout for a bigger discount. What is going on guys, TVM here, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to look at a, I would say cheap, but he's, I mean he's not cheap cheap, but he's reasonably cheap though. He's well under 100k, in fact he's around 60 to 65,000 coins right now, and you'll be familiar with him, you'll know exactly who it is. And in fact the thumbnail may even give it away, I am of course talking about... Insigne. That rhymed. Um, this guy is mental. And you'll look at the stats and you go, oh, actually, your goal contributions to games played isn't that great. So what are you talking about? I actually play him as a cam. Playing this guy as a striker would probably be a little bit better, but he doesn't really... He needs to play as a cam. He's he's the better of the cam options out of Mertens, uh, Lacazette, and of course himself. And I play him as a cam. He's got quite a few games for me, 102, he's got 38 goals, 37 assists from the cam spot in a 4-1-2-1-2. 4-star, two, two. Four 4-star, four star, high medium. He's only 5 foot 4, which may put a lot of people off. The the trio of dreams, really, is obviously Insigne, Mertens and Allen. I've got 9 Golan in there for now, although that will change. Uh, but this guy is mental. I mean, he is so good. And some of the some of the goals he scores, he literally just bangs them in for fun. Let's go through it as if it were a player review. And we'll have a look at his attributes. Uh, with a dead eye on him, of course, uh, he does improve the finishing. And we get a nice uh, passing boost as well. And you can change this. I think a sniper is probably the better, one of the better chem styles for him to improve that composure. If you want to use him as a striker. Now I'm fully aware that he has a screen card. The only problem with that of course is that it's nearly a million coins. 950 on PlayStation. 850 on Xbox. And a million it bang on on PC. So very expensive card. And if you really compare the two. This is what's so crazy about it. If you compare the two. Uh, you'll see that. Um, I mean you can't see this on screen. But I'll just tell you. You only get a, a plus 2 boost in pace, you get plus 8 in finishing, which is decent, you get a plus 2 in dribbling, which is almost nothing, passing is 2 as well, defending is 2. The only real significant upgrade that I think would be worth the coins there is the physical boost. It goes up 23 overall, but it, it, more than anything, the the important stat is the strength, uh, not strength, the stamina. It goes up 27 to 99. So... The only real difference, and the reason people are literally paying 900,000 coins more than this card is worth, is because they want 99 stamina and maybe 80-something shooting. You can get something particularly high in terms of shooting with many chem styles. Like I said, the Sniper takes him to 92. The Deadeye obviously is 92 as well, but you've got a shot power boost. Like, you know, if you don't believe in chem styles, that's fair enough. If you think it warrants another 900,000 coins to get that... Uh, natural shooting then fair enough but for me personally having 85 shooting compared to 77 isn't worth 900,000 coins and that stamina would be really nice but I never feel the need to sub him off anyway and I play him as a cam which is in my opinion a more demanding position than a striker uh, but it, it is what it is um, really nice stats across the board anyway you know, for an 87 rated card that is 60,000 coins, 90 dribbling, 93 ball control, reactions and composure are, you know, adequate, uh, really good agility and balance, very, very quick off the mark, uh, great long shots, decent attack positioning for starters, nice short passing and vision, that's why he's the cam, and of course, like I said, the stamina, yeah, okay, kind of does let him down, 72 is not ideal at all, but I don't think it's worth 900,000 coins more than what this card is worth to get a nice stamina boost and to get a, a, a decent finishing boost. Put a chem style on him, and the only thing you're missing out on now is the stamina. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, w I went with a dead eye because I needed that passing, and I also wanted that finishing boost. You'll see in some of the clips we're about to go into, he scores some absolute crackers. And since the patch, people have been struggle struggling to score, and Insigne just doesn't suffer with that at all. He still knows how to put that ball in the back of the net. He's very clinical. And let me go back to the team very, very briefly. You'll see that um, nine Golan is uh, is the player to sort of link him in with Mertens. Mertens, by the way, I've already done a video on him. He is incredible. Uh, big fan of this guy, and the record suggests that uh, I'm a big fan of him as well. Uh, you know, I never really have a plus sort of goal to game ratio. That's never my thing. We share the goals out in this club. I'm not selfish. We, we pass it around. Uh, but he does have a positive uh, goal contribution ratio to game, so that's that's kind of cool. But those those two in particular together 
fantastic. Lacazette is coming up top next to Mertens and tucked in behind is Insigne. Three of them are deadly, although saying that, Lacazette is actually going to leave me uh, before next weekend. But uh, without any further ado, let me show you what I'm banging on about. So, as we go into the clips, I've just taken a few. Um, I mean, obviously, you've seen the amount of games I've played with him. If you watch The Road to Glory, you'll know all about him already. But uh, I've just gone into the most recent weekend league. I've gone through a couple of games. I've taken out a few clips and just all of his goals, really. You'll see more goals in this than you will nearly any other play review that I do. Uh, because it's it's quite literally all the, the goals and, and near misses and chances from weekend league. But he is... So good from that range, and that's perfect timing because that is the range in which I really get most of his goals. Uh, from the edge of the area, you do a little drag back, which, by the way, are so nice and, and crisp because he's got that agility and he's got really high ball control and dribbling, and he's quick naturally anyway. You'll find that you get a lot of you know drag backs so like fluid that they just completely send the defender the wrong way this position again bang and this time unfortunately hits the post but if you get a little bit more purchase on that and uh, maybe straighten up slightly then that just rifles into the back of the net he's so good from that area again lovely ball in and Mertens this time putting the ball in but him and Mertens together I mean it's not impossible to fit Insigne in a team without Mertens but I don't know why you'd want to do it because Mertens card is fantastic and like I said I've already done a video on it so I'm not going to sit here and, and sing his praises too much and that position again and it's just it's a carbon copy it's almost like a cheat code when you get into that position just outside the D or just inside the D whichever way you want to uh, spin it and again lovely ball control there and again another cracking finish but just sort of in and around the D on the, to the right side of it just knock it straight down no no direction just knock it straight and it goes in the back of the net like nine times out of ten you're gonna you're going to uh, ripple that net. And again here, look at the pace shown. Just beats the keeper. One touch, two touch. Keeper can't get anywhere near him. And it's an easy finish for him. I mean, I'm going to do a review screen for him because why not, right? But um, we're going to go into a little comparison in a second because there is a particular player who a lot of people are currently working towards. Maybe you've got a couple of days left and you are really trying to grind that out. Um, Zaha, right? Zaha is a player that people are working towards. And if you compare both of them together... It, it will surprise you. Um, negatives, of course, stamina and strength. Those those are the two that really do stand out on this card. And you can't do anything about it. You know, if you get the screen card, fine. You eliminate the stamina problem, but you still have the strength problem. Now, for me, strength isn't really that much of a negative. But you do kind of need to mention it because otherwise people are going to be like, well, hang on a minute. He's got 40 strength. Surely that's a negative. I mean, yeah, technically speaking, it is. But he's so quick that it's very rare that he just gets like sort of muscled off the ball. If you try and beat a, a defender, for instance, and you go shoulder to shoulder, maybe, you know, like Van Dijk or something will lock into him and he won't be able to get past him. PK is a common one these days to come up against. Uh, yeah, you, you might have a, a problem there, but he's so fast that... Generally, he just runs random, and you don't have to go shoulder to shoulder. He is an excellent player for 60,000 coins, and I, to be honest, I don't. apart from that stamina, I don't see this card really being outgrown by any special items or promos, at least for another two months. I mean, minimum. Because, uh, obviously, th we're not going to get anything now, theoretically, until Team of the Group stage, and then Team of the Group stage would have to be a very specific player to want to replace Insigne. And then, I mean, he might even get a special card, although it might go to Mertens. I'm not quite sure how, uh, what sort of players for Napoli have been performing well. But either way, this card is brilliant. But let me just give you a little comparison. Right here, I have the storyline Zaha next to Insigne. Now, I'm not saying, oh, don't get Zaha, get Insigne, because uh, Insigne is better. I'm not saying that at all. That is not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is don't be too disheartened if you can't get this Storyline Zaha card. Now, I've had the game since early access, and I don't know whether I'll actually get the 100,000 points needed. Not because I'm bad at the game, it's just because I'm lazy, right? Now, if you compare these two, yeah, you're not paying for Zaha and you are paying for Insigne, so there's that difference there. But if you, if you do look at them, you'll see that total in-game stats uh, goes to Insigne. 2066 compared to 2027. Now, there are a lot of comparisons to be made. You know, uh, Zaha will win some of them and, and Insigne will win some of them. It's not for me to say which one is the best card necessarily. But I'm just saying, if you've worked for the last, what, two, three months towards that Zaha card, just know that this Insigne card 
uh, isn't actually that bad compared. In fact, some in some cases, he actually does win. So the finish in goes to Zaha, and the shot power goes to Zaha. But then long shots, Zaha can't hit a ball from distance for love nor money. Insigne can, and you've seen the evidence of it. 85 long shots there on paper as well. Pace is very similar because obviously Insigne's got the acceleration, doesn't have the sprint speed, and then the other way around for Zaha. Um, I mean, passing across the board really goes to Insigne. Uh, like Zaha literally cannot compete in any area whatsoever. So you could only really use Zaha as a striker. You couldn't use him as a cam successfully because his short passing and vision just aren't good enough, especially at this stage. Dribbling, again, apart from dribbling stat itself, which is only two points in it anyway, it goes to Insigne. The reactions, for instance, 84 to 78. The balance is 93 to 83. And the agility is 94 to 89. So there's a, there's a big difference in some of the stats there in favor of Insigne. Defending doesn't really matter too much. But again, he wins things like heading and marking. And uh, it's all irrelevant, really. And then, of course, the, the physicals. Uh, that's a clean sweep for Zaha. Uh, but again, it's not by an awful lot in areas that really matter. So stamina goes to Zaha, but it's 72 to 78, so they're both still in the 70s. Jumping, they're both horrendous, so that's irrelevant. Strength is the only real stat out of every single stat, not just in physicality, but in everything, that I'm looking at thinking, right, that could be um, the, the difference. That could be the reason why I choose one over the other. 79 for Zaha, 40 for Insigne. So that's a, that's a big issue, uh, and I won't lie that Insigne does have strength problems. We've already mentioned this, but he's so quick and agile that generally if you know how to use uh, even one or two skill moves ball roll and drag back you should be fine to not get muscled off the ball I, I, re I like both cards to be fair I think both cards are decent I think the Zaha card should be higher rated I think he should be an 86 87 for the first storyline I think it would have been nice uh, four star four star on Insigne five star three star on Zaha and I'm gonna do a video later on on a particular player that has a three star weak foot and one of the only reasons I, I'm not a big fan of that card is the weak foot so this year I'm a stickler for four star but all in all you know, like, just just a little comparison, just to give you some idea as to how good this Insigne card actually is. For 60,000 coins, he is an absolute bargain. Let me know what you think down below. Do you like Insigne? Have you tried him? Did you get on with him? Is he in your team? Uh, of course, if you did enjoy the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you do, and until the next time, goodbye. Football Index. The game changed. Download the app now.